yesterday I took part in something that's a kind of a unique idea. It's called Circulation Day. And at this one church in Des Plaines, on one day, everybody brings things that they don't use anymore, and they set them out, and they can take anything they would like, and then they leave, and then today, it's open to the whole community, and anybody who needs anything can come and just take it, and there's no charge. And it's really a good feeling to bring treasures that you don't really need anymore, and see somebody else really be happy about getting something special. I think that um, most people already know that Helen and Tom and I um, go to the Broadview Detention Center to pray on Friday mornings, and also that Tom and I go to the McKenna Jail. Now, the, one of the, the third um, phase of that is to have homes for people who are released from the detention center but um, have nowhere to go and don't have a job. So the committee is working on two former convents, just what the Pope said we're supposed to do with our former convents. <laughs> um, and one of the difficulties of getting, they have the two convents, one of the difficulties is uh, getting the zoning for more than three unrelated people to live in the same house. But it seems to be going forward. I've been to court watch a bunch of the volunteers that, that go to the immigration courts uh, downtown Chicago and just observe and make sure, see that the people are properly represented and uh, kind of find out what people's stories are and what, what they can do to help maybe before they get to that point or why people get to that point. And also there's uh, a um, march being organized uh, two weeks from today from Plain Cathedral to the immigration um, Federal Plaza in Chicago and then told St. Mary's. And just to bring note to the issue that you can sit down and work out some things on the, on the immigration um, laws and procedures in this country. I will be working on a presentation for the associates in January on the uh, nonviolent resistance and looking at the works of Tolstoy, Gandhi, and Martin Luther King to kind of clarify how they went about putting their ideas into action. It's second week of January. At our um, elementary school, um, we've always been focusing on how to be Christ to one another. And so three years ago, this is my seventh year there, we came up with four basic guidelines. And the first one is to be kind to one another. So the first year we did the Beatitudes, I felt it went nowhere. We memorized them and all that, but I didn't see much change in our relationship. So uh, this year we're taking one day each quarter to focus on being kind to one another. So this past um, two weeks when you had the uh, Peace Day, we combined it and called it Peace and Kindness Day. And I had five students in the eighth grade, they helped plan it. Um, Somebody gave me some kites, so my 7th and 8th graders worked with the 1st and 2nd graders trying to focus on saying kind things, encouraging things, to put the kites together. And they went out and flew them, and then when they were told they got to keep them, oh my, they were, they were just so grateful and so thrilled. And one little 1st grader, her kite went up in the tree. A little 2nd grade boy went over quick and said, here, you can have mine. And it was such a, such a wonderful experience that we had. And then we uh, had a prayer service, and we adapted uh, the parable of the talents, and we called it the parable of the coins of kindness. And so they had the coins, and when we acted it out, they went out to the students and gave them the coins. And then we made sure that every classroom got at least one coin. That was to be their, like, say a kind word, say thank you, smile, that type of thing. Uh, and then the students I have, I always have exceptional students, of course, they went ahead on their own and they said, Sister, we wrote a Pledge of Kindness. And it was about praying, saying kind words, being helpful. And so every student signed it. Now we have it hanging in our, in our main hallway. So it's so easy now for the kids to kind of focus on, you know, what did I do today and so forth. So the next one will be next quarter sometime and it'll be about gratitude and whatever they come up with will be just fabulous, so. Two of the principles of active nonviolence that I share with friends and um, like assistants and people in the parish that they really appreciate and 
one of them is that every person has part of the truth and that we need to speak that truth as we see it. It has to be heard so that the greater truth can come to be. So to really encourage people to speak their truth and to realize that every person principle uh, acting on violence that people appreciate is that to use our energy to focus on issues, not on the people. So when you find yourself wanting to complain about a person, just remind yourself there's an issue here that I need to focus my energy on, not criticizing, complaining, or uh, judging other people. And people really seem to appreciate those two principles of acting on violence. Uh, one of the things I've done for the last 14 years is I work with uh, Pillars Community Center, and uh, I'm a volunteer for the Sexual Abuse Hotline. And so I do that twice a month. Uh, sometimes I get called, sometimes I don't, sometimes it's a telephone call, sometimes it's a hospital call. And um, we try to respond to whatever the need is at that time, uh, what they're calling about. Um, when we go to the hospital, we're a support to the person or the family, uh, bring clothes, like they keep the person's clothes as evidence so that uh, we bring sweatpants, so a sweatsuit, so that they have something to go home in. And let them know that, um, you know, about the law in Illinois, you know, that um, anyone who's a victim of abuse can have uh, hospital care, emergency room care free. And some of them don't know that. Um, and, and also, they can get free counseling from the first community center. And one of the things, mostly it's women who call, but lately, I've been very surprised. I've gotten calls from men who are not just calling about their girlfriend or their daughter or what, what they can do, but for themselves. And um, one of those recent hospital calls I made was was for a male uh, victim. So that, that certainly has been a change. That's just been within the last year. At St. Francis Xavier Parish, we are partnering, uh, the youth ministry program is partnering with the domestic violence um, outreach ministry to have one of our presentations be on um, nonviolent intervention when, um, when there's aggression in the moment. And so we're excited to be able to open that dialogue with high schoolers in a time when they're developing uh, those connections and working on how and their expression. And so um, we're really partnering with the Domestic Violence Outreach Ministry to make that happen. Um, in the neighborhood that, that I um, work in, uh, where my ministry is, it's, it's in an increasingly violent neighborhood. And, um, we, as, as a staff, have been very concerned about it, of course, and so um, we've, we've all been taking part in um, a prayer vigil, and we're going to be um, having more intentional discussions with other um, organizations in the neighborhood that have uh, a similar, similar hope of, of um, reducing the, the violence, the gun violence, whatever violence, um, and, and we're um, trying to address different ways of uh, just getting, getting people to see other alternatives. I recently met with the um, Kiwanis group in St. Louis uh, to speak about LASH, and they were very receptive, and some of them were not aware of LASH or not aware that we had LASH in St. Louis. And I made a few connections with some of the uh, business folks on this Kiwanis, um, in this organization, and also with um, was a young woman who said she's a neighbor of ours, and she's very interested in partnering with us uh, in opportunities for the students. So I'm very hopeful about uh, some service opportunities for the uh, high school students to come to L'Arche, 
and possibly um, volunteer opportunities for our large community members to um, connect in with the schools. So that was one thing uh, that I'm excited about. We also recently had uh, Webster University, just, just this past week, came to our, um, or they have a Webster Works uh, service day every year, and they came, uh, they sent five of their track students, or track members, to come to our house, and we had to do all this gardening for us, and then we brought them in, and they met the members of our community, we sat down and had a snack and tea, and then uh, showed a video on Larsh and shared our mission, um, and invited them to come to our monthly community nights. So we're, we're really making efforts to connect to the broader community and uh, and invite people into to being a part of the mission of Larsh. We're getting ready for a work of human hands craft fair. We do it every year, where we um, bring in one consignment because we don't make money on it, but we bring in the, the materials from third world countries and we make it available for people in our parish. We also work with uh, Bob Kettleson and he sends us uh, things from the, the Native American groups and it's just wonderful to see that connection with uh, a much broader world. And we're, we use some fair trade, we have a number of people who are part of fair trade. I don't really work with large organizations. I work more on an individual basis with um, St. Vincent de Paul in our parish. And we run into many situations of where we could practice acts of nonviolence. For instance, many times um, men will uh, divorce their wives, leave them without support, leave them with the children. Um, we refer them to free legal aid. We make sure they eat, that their rent is paid, that type of thing. Um, we run into elderly people who either are stressed financially, sometimes it's because relatives are taking advantage of them financially, and we get them meals on wheels and try to straighten those situations out. So what we do, or what I do, is much more low key. It's just more on an individual one-to-one -one basis. But we try and do something good for everyone. Well, I work for the Medical Missionaries of Mary in the Development Office. But I've never thought of my work as uh, um, trying to bring in money. I've always thought of it as a way to connect people to the larger story of things. So when I, when I write, Try to elicit, I try to draw a picture from the person of, of a certain situation, whatever that situation is, whether it be um, um, uh, trafficking or um, poverty, children's poverty, education, uh, whatever it is. But I try to draw some kind of a, of a, 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 stretch, a structure between the people who have and the people who don't have and build a relationship around that. So that um, I, I, I think little by little, our part, I, I didn't call them donors, never called them donors. I always call them partners because they are partners in the same mission. And little by little, it's, it's starting to come back to me. They write to me and they, they, they say the same thing back that I've been saying this time about the circle of gift. And I would say here at St. Julie's, we partner with Sarah at Port, and as a parish, we are very much connected with the mission. Though we cannot, we don't do not go there um, to do the ministry itself. We are just very supportive in any way that we can, and our our parish as a whole is very committed to the Port. You send lunches every every how long? Every other week, we send three to four hundred lunches to the Port. And Sarah has a cargo of, of knitted, hand knitted um, socks and gloves and ponchos, all sizes. I mean, I don't know if you didn't look at it, but there's some really cute little ones for like three and four year old ponchos. And I thought, 
that's how we connect with the gift that one has here becomes a gift for somebody else. And we do that with St. Vincent and Paul, we do that with several soup kitchens, we do that with uh, Daybreak Shelter in Joliet. The parish is, is continuing to, to call itself to a better stewardship of its many resources, both time, talent, and treasure. Well, I think it's interesting that in our parish, uh, about five years ago, they chose to develop ways to not use plastic and paper when you went to the grocery store. And so um, it was done in essence as um, just saying we really understand that creation is important and it was my jubilee year so it was kind of done that way. And people wrote me notes what they were going to do and I still have those notes and it's very interesting because they conserved electricity, they made promises, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But this year they reordered, mainly because we have a new parish logo, and they also added an insulated bag mm -hmm. to go with it. And people are really, um, they're really interested in doing that. And then I have to laugh to myself because the truth is, I carry the bags in my car, I go into shop, and the bags are still in my car. So I have to be a little cr more creative for myself of... Uh, making sure I attach that bag to my arm when I go shopping. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like the insulated bags. That's a new thing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's very, I, I like that forward, that they're renewing it and reviewing it. And then obviously our parish for more than five years has really tried to stay away from styrofoam in all the groups that meet there and everything so that we try to encourage the non-use of uh, mm -hmm. styrofoam. And we do recycling too and now um, we had a place that you could take your recycled things to. Mm -hmm. You sorted them out and, and they helped you when you got, uh, got them up there. So. But now waste management has got, you've got a, a second bu uh, bucket uh -huh. with a yellow lid on and that's the recycled things. Mm -hmm. And then you have your regular trash and you have your yard things. And in my case, I'm by myself, so I don't have enough for one person, of just one person. And I've got a single man that lives across the street. So he pays for it, and the two of us share one, uh, one set of buckets for um, the, the recycled stuff. And then you don't have to sort it out either. Um, that's good. That is great. That is great. Yeah. It's much wider what they'll accept as recycling than where we were able to take it yeah. to recycle. And I do the same thing. Sister Cheryl and I both share one big bucket and one recycle bucket instead of two of us. Because mm -hmm. right? we both live technically alone. Well, my parish, um, we've been doing recycling of paper for a long time. And the parish does get some funds from that, which we give to the St. Vincent de Paul Society. And we've been doing aluminum cans forever, and that goes into my mission fund that the PSR program uses. Well, now in our both in our meeting room in the church, and in our gym, we have a receptacle for for um, aluminum cans. But we've also put out one for plastic. So because particularly once the games start, they you have, you know your water bottles are forever. And they were just throwing those in with the garbage, but now with the receptacles there, we're finding that. And then um, our maintenance lady takes them to, to the recycle place, the plastic. The aluminum is picked up right there at the parish. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's what we've been doing as far as recycling is concerned. And we keep reminding the children that one can recycled will power your um, TV I don't can't, I can't remember how many hours. Mm -hmm. No, it's not, as far as energy is concerned. Mm -hmm. Now, our Franciscan Federation region last spring had a whole day on trafficking as it related to um, abuse of women and, and not only women but girls and that. Now, in February of 2000, what's coming? 14? 14. 14. 
we will have trafficking another day on trafficking as it relates to labor. So that's in the making right now. That's what the Francis Confederation is doing, our region. Well, I live alone and I don't belong to a parish, you know, active parish in St. Louis. But what I find very helpful to me is that every Sunday evening we stand on the steps of College Church. We've been doing this since two weeks after 9-11 to pray for peace and to be a witness to peace. We have a big banner that says pray for peace. We start with a song, very loud decibel, so that all the traffic going by in Lindell, of which there's a lot, will hear and notice. And a lot of times we get a this or a thumbs mm -hmm. up. And then there's a time for prayer and silence, and then different people present readings related to peace. But what is very helpful to me, in addition to that corporate sense of belonging to something bigger, keeping peace in mind and working for peace, is that you're always being presented with upcoming events for the week in terms of standing for justice. For example, one week it was, let's join the peace march for the Peabody Coal people asking for their proper, uh, you know, recompense, recompense yeah. is right. Retirement and and well, it was everything that had to do with their justice issues. Of, and so that was a group, but it was announced to us, so you knew it was happening in St. Louis. Or when we were celebrating the Hiroshima days, you know, like, okay, so there's a big peace event in a certain park we're told that that's going to be happening. And lots of times people will pass out flyers of things happening in their parish. Or sometimes somebody will just read something meaningful from like America or NCR. So for me, that's a sense of being part of something bigger than myself so that I can act in concert with the peace community. I belong to a little literacy center of we can only house 12 people at any time. But there's a little recycling bin in our place, and you know, they put their pop bottles and cans in, and they're aware of the issue. But I'm always reminded of that thing of, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Somebody's doing it. Just join with them. And that's why I, I think my involvement for me is my way of finding out what's going on and being part of it, even though I rarely am part of what the system is doing. But um, I'm reaching out to the Lexington Central Kentucky Council for Peace and Justice again to get involved a little bit more and, and have offered the center to, uh, for Laura Anderson to come down for our community college and the University of Kentucky in the spring and uh, do her presentation from the, Alan, the Al Gore um, conference she, she had done. And the, Community College has already accepted and wants to have her down around Earth Day and will get a contact at UK. So I'm hoping that will, you know, happen and and I'll be part of a, a bigger group again and not be by myself. To the faculties of some schools uh, at the beginning of the year and that it's usually like a four or five hour retreat and it's basically strictly peacemaking All right. mm -hmm. to the faculties of some of the schools because I do have some connections with those people. And also Lodi and I once a month go to visit prisons, visit a prison and um, the most popular person in the prison is the dog. <laughs> um, but a very interesting thing is somebody came up to us last time we were there and that person said, I haven't petted a dog in 30 years. Oh. Oh. He had been in for 30, he's in for life. Oh. And um, so it's amazing. So we visit with, with them and then um, we bring in Harley and Harley can go in because she's a service dog. Um, during the month of October, I'm doing a program for three weeks on Francis and the Sultan, the DVD that was done by Kathy Warren. So the first week um, I've used a film on Francis and we've looked at the Wolf of Gubbio because there's actually more that you could do, but there's only two parts to this video. But I'm doing that with a, an adult group on Thursdays. And uh, more than anything, it's helping us to have a better connection with Muslims. And uh, I work, I'm the representative for the clergy, so I work with lots of different religions. And we're planning a Thanksgiving celebration again, the 
Tuesday night of Thanksgiving week, and we have about 16 different religions, including the Buddhists and the Muslims and the Seekers and the Baha'i and so forth. So I think that really gives us a sense of yeah. connectedness and peace. Where? It'll be in Escondido. We take it at different churches. Last year it was Latter-day Saints. This year it's going to be at St. Timothy's. We had planned to have already done this, but there was a situation at the facility. We want to start a self-esteem uh, presentation, Julie and myself and Teresa, if she comes back from Tucson, that uh, goes into girls' rehabilitation facilities here, is what used to be Juvenile Hall in the San Diego area, to work with self-esteem. And our contact is Jorge, the one that was sitting next to me this morning. Um, Hopefully it will work out into a once a month or something like that, working with the, they're all, I think, 13 to 18 year olds. Hi, my name is Sarah, and one of the things that we recently did, we had a one-day workshop um, called Who I Am Makes a Difference, and the lady who founded it, um, her goal is to spread love throughout the world, and she goes to schools or different organizations and by promoting self-esteem and self-worth, um, she has been able to um, promote um, promote this in the schools amongst students and then um, eliminate bullying in an attempt to eliminate bullying because she um, shows that the person who is doing the bullying is also also makes a difference and is a worthwhile person and that allows that person to ask for forgiveness and to stop their, their bullying of others and the persons being bullied um, can forgive that person and um, she's been making quite an impact on people of all ages all over the world and her goal is to uh, introduce this concept to a billion people by the year 2020. We just recently had our uh, first year birthday of the Peace Connection in San Diego, California. We work with the outdoor people um, youth and self-esteem. Um, we have uh, Bible study, prayer, uh, contemplative dialogue. We just started a scholarship for folks that uh, want to come to meetings that need help or want to go to meetings in the area and can't afford them. We decided this year that we would start our associate meetings each month by saying the Rosary for Peace. and. Uh, I started a ministry which I'm soon going to incorporate the associates in, and that is to send cards to everybody in the parish that is shut in or sick and can't get out and receive no mail usually. And we have 42 of them now that we're sending them to. And also, and of course, that we're giving to prisoners. I joined them. Pax Christi, we have prayer services down by the state capitol the night before executions. We pray for the victim, pray for those being executed and for those who were victims of the perpetrator and for the end to this capital punishment.